Hi everyone, it's Sean from WhatUp, and welcome back to another video, and this is take 34 of my intro. I I'm mispronouncing words already, and they're just basic, regular words. They're not even place names or people's names from the books, so we're off to a great start. We're going to talk about a couple of different things tonight, the first being some promotional mater materials. There we go, I can't, I can't speak tonight. Are making their way out to some of the bookstores. We're going to talk a bit about that. We're going to talk a bit about those leaked photos that some of you may have seen on VK and on Facebook. And then we're going to talk just a bit about Rafe Judkin's recent Q&A. Uh, I'm really excited about all this stuff and stay tuned at the end of the video we'll talk just a bit about my 10,000 subscriber contest and my Patreon. I'm just going to let you know a little bit more about that because it is live now. Now with all that being said, spoiler warning, in this video we're going to talk about certain elements of book one, that's the eye of the world, of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time series. So if you haven't read at least book one before warned, I might ruin some ma minor plot points and minor character arcs from that story for you. Alright, that being said, let's get on to the video. All right, so we're going to talk about promotional materials now, and this Reddit user, Cotty Waffle Journeys, posted a couple of threads on Reddit uh, in some of the Wheel Time groups showing some of these promotional materials. Now, they want to say that they work for Barnes & Noble. Now, these are their posts here, uh, and that they've been put out, and they're pretty excited about it because book sales are probably going to go up as the show gets closer, and they're going to start displaying these. These are display posters um, that are going to advertise the book series as the show comes out. Now, they said something that I kind of thought at the same time, that these are not show images. So we're not seeing show images on these posters. We are seeing artwork that a lot of people in the fandom are really very familiar with, but not stuff from the show. Now, there's a question there that is, that's a million dollar question. Why aren't they using show images? Well, I think it's for this reason right here. <laughs> uh, this Reddit user posted it and they don't want unsolicited show images showing up all over the place because they've been so secretive about stuff for a very, very long time, and we're going to see that in a second when we talk about those leaked photos, uh, very, very secretive, and they don't like the stuff getting out. They're very safe to use familiar artwork that a lot of the fandom is going to recognize, and some of the non-fandom won't recognize, but it will be new to them anyway. Uh, so I think that's why they're using this kind of stuff now, at least until the trailer hits and it goes really very, very mainstream, then I think we're going to see a lot more of this stuff. Now again, uh, Cotty Wumple Journeys said that they work for Barnes & Noble, so we're probably going to see other bookstores and other promotional materials showing up in the next coming days and weeks. And I think after the trailer drops, it'll be a big influx of this stuff. So I'm really, really excited to see this stuff. And my email is in the About section of my channel, so if any of you folks out there in the world get a hold of any of this stuff, uh, send me an email because I really like seeing it. I think it's really cool. Um, and at the very least, even if I can't use it in a video, I'd like to geek out over it because I love this stuff. Now again, there's your posts. So now we're going to talk about these. These are the leaked photos from VK and Facebook. Um, if you don't know what VK is, it's essentially Russian Facebook. Now, some of my Russian viewers may contradict me on that. And if they do, go with what they say. In my understanding, it's like a Russian Facebook. That's, that's what I get out of it. It's a social media platform. Um, now... This particular person that posted these uh, images, it was from their own personal account. They did kind of a little bit of an AMA on Facebook uh, in VK. They talked a bit about it there. They posted stuff on I Am Gur. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken the link from I Am Gur and I've left it down below in the description box. Those photos are still active there, so if you choose to go view them, you can. However, I'm not going to show them here. They're going to be blurred out as we go through them, so you'll kind of get an idea of maybe what they are, but it doesn't really show the photo um, because... This person took them down from Facebook, they took them down from VK, or they were taken down rather, um, and they are images from a closed set. So it'll be up to you folks if you want to go to I Am Gur, uh, do so at your own risk to view the images. However, I'll show the blurred out kind of uh, edited versions here because it doesn't really show much. Now, they showed some close-ups of his costume as well as pieces of the set. Now, they're really very neat photos. They do get to show some things, nothing really new though. Um, so what they showcase is they showcase bits of the Tarvalon set. Now, we do know that it's Tarvalon because of other leaks that have happened over the last couple of months. And we've already had a really good look at the set from some of the photos that have come out over the last few weeks, as well as some of the leaked stuff from earlier. And it's beautiful, it's immaculate, and they did build this set from scratch, and I'm very excited to see it on screen. Um, we get a few close-up shots of parts of the set, some of the costuming, and I did get to learn from a source close to the production that this person was the puppeteer that they had cast, uh, which was really very neat. So you get to see a few of, you know, things from set from their point of view, which is really, really, very cool. Again, proceed at your own risk to those images. They will be up on I Am Gur in the link down below. I don't know for how long, so if you're watching this video, you know, after it's released a couple of days or weeks or whatever, and the link doesn't work anymore, it's because they were taken down. So there's that. Now we're going to talk a bit about Rafe Judkins' Q&A. 
he recently did a Q&A and then the Wheel of Time account retweeted it and they put it out there for a lot of different people to see. So what it was, it was on that Entertainment Weekly article. He said that anyone who asked him questions within the next hour or so, he would randomly pick a couple of them and answer them. And he did. Uh, so the first question asked was, whose idea was it to have was it to have Matt have a beard? Now, I've seen this come up in my comments a lot. Um, so people who've watched the channel for quite some time, newer viewers, uh, subscribers, non-subscribers, people who just happen across my videos, they tend to take issue with the fact that Matt has a beard and Perrin has a beard so very early. Um, and here's the answer from the showrunner. We aged up the Emmons Field Fire from the books because sometimes TV shows uh, with a bunch of 17-year-olds as leads feels more like YA and Wheel of Time isn't YA. Now, we've known for a while that Wheel of Time will be dark, it will be gritty, it will be very very scary in some aspects and it'll also be very adult oriented you know whether that means sex scenes i assume it does it probably means nudity because they do have intimacy coordinators on set for some of these scenes um but we also know it's going to be very scary it's going to have some very mature themes in it and if they age up the actors it makes to me a little bit of sense because then they can really go with a lot of different things now if you think game of thrones a lot of the actors uh, and actresses in game of thrones and the characters that played on the tv show were much older than they were in the books because it played better to a broader audience than someone very young uh, would have. And I think that's kind of what they're doing here with the Wheel of Time. Next question. Um, can we expect to see any of the Forsaken in Season 1? Now, this is the main reason for the spoiler warning at the beginning of the video. Uh, his answer was, it depends on how much you know about the Forsaken, with kind of a you know smiley face there. So, um, I'm going to ask you folks, how much do you know about the Forsaken? We know in the first book, we see the Dark One quite a few times. Um, and it's not really the Dark One. It's a Shamael. So I'm thinking that this is probably a pretty big hint that we're going to see a Shamael in the first book, um, as well as maybe another Forsaken. Now, he doesn't directly talk about Agenor or Bathamel. Um, maybe we'll get to see them. I've always theorized that we're probably not going to see both of them. Maybe we'll see some sort of amalgamation with one character, or maybe perhaps we'll see neither one of them, and the big fight at the end of the book will be with a Shamael rather than two Forsaken and then the Dark One afterwards. Again, mm -hmm. they're going to change and take some liberties with the story because they have already, uh, and they're going to make it work the best way they can for TV. That's my guess. Next question. Uh, will the world of dreams be in the show? Now, this is a pretty big question because a lot of people have asked about this for a very long time. They're really concerned that we're not going to see Teleron Rioid, uh, but how could you do the show without it was his response, and I'm really happy with that because I want to see Teleron Rioid. Tele there we go. Told you I couldn't pronounce things tonight. I want to see the world of dreams in the show because it is a very, very big part, especially in the later books. And it plays a major, major role in a lot of different storylines. Perrin's, Egwene's, the Wise Ones, um, some of the Aes Sedai. It, it's going to be really cool to see. Next question. This is four to five. How are you feeling, Rafe? It feels good to see the fandom freaking out on a Wednesday. Now, this was really cool because... The Entertainment Weekly article did drop on a Wednesday and everybody kind of went nuts. Uh, There's a bit of a kerfuffle with the release, but it was still very cool to see and everyone was very excited about it. And Rafe said, it's so nice. I'm glad people are liking what's out there. The more Twitter time can get people excited and engaging with these things, the better it is for the show and more people will get welcome to this weird world. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again. A lot of the people that they're going to attract to the show will be non-readers, so people who haven't read the books before. So there's going to be a whole lot of new people joining the fandom, and I think we've seen that in the last few weeks and months. There are brand new people that are starting to pick up the books because of the show. There are brand new people that are waiting for the show that don't really read fantasy, that don't want to read fantasy, but are excited for a fantasy-type show. And we're going to see more and more of that, and it's really nice, scary, but nice to see our community really growing. Last question was, who is always late to set? Now, this was really interesting i wanted to have a real answer but rave kind of came back and said oh i wish i hadn't randomly selected this one ha let me see maybe i'll just keep typing until i run out of characters and then it'll just be like whoops i couldn't really answer your question of course i wish i could but it's just so tough with the character limit on twitter and then he's cut off so he doesn't want to say but we can all guess for sure there's always that one actor actress in almost every single production that is either a little difficult to work with, a little late, a little scatterbrained, whatever it may be. And there's always some good stories from other cast and crew. Uh, I haven't heard anything yet, but if you happen to work on the show, drop me a line. Let me know who that is, because I would really love to know. Now, that's pretty much all the news we have for you this evening. I just wanted to cover the promotional materials, these questions, as well as those uh, pictures. Now, again, those pictures have been redacted. I did blur them out. If you do want to see them, I am great at your own list, risk. Link is down below in the description box. All right, before I let you go, I will mention that 10,000 subscriber contest once more. 
All you have to do is just be a subscriber. That's pretty much it. Like and comment on the videos and you're entered. I'll randomly select one comment who also likes the videos and is also a subscriber uh, two weeks after I hit 10,000 subscribers. Now, I know a couple of you have mentioned it's awfully early to start this, but I did start mentioning my 5,000 subscriber contest at 3,000 subscribers, um, and I was pleasantly surprised at how quickly I shot up to 5,000. So I wanted to give people time just in case it was very quick and I hit 10,000 too quickly uh, because the show was right around the corner, and I'm going to face, let, let's face it here, the channel is growing quite quickly, more quickly than I anticipated. So if I hit 10,000, quicker at least this gives quite a few of you uh, veterans of the channel time to comment a bunch of my videos because uh, every comment on every different video is an entry uh, essentially because I'm going to pick one comment at random so the more you comment the better that's essentially it last thing I want to mention is Patreon this is the first video I've released early for my Patreons I want to thank all of my patrons uh, who have uh, in the last couple of days it's been active uh, donated to the channel because it is really going to help us grow uh, and help me do different and interesting things, which I'm very excited about, which hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys about in a month or two. Um, but I'm really, really, really very grateful for all your support. Thank you so much. And again, if you want to be a, a patron, the link is down below in the description box. I'm not going to mention it every video or push it really hard, but it is there. If it is something you'd like to do and support us here, I would really greatly appreciate it. All right. I want to thank you all so very much for sticking with me here to the very end. And here's to many more.